Glenn, obviously a, a really eventful week in, in your life last week. Just just talk us through it, Monday at Wembley and, and then the news of, of being released by Aston Villa. No, great, great day, great occasion. Um, I signed two years at Aston Villa to get them back in the Premier League and, and I got them there, so for me, mission complete. Obviously, to be released, it wasn't a surprise. Obviously, at what stage I'm at in my career and, and where Aston Villa want to go. So, I'm um, no, very pleased and, and what I achieved over the, over the last two seasons. So, did you know going into that final that it, it would be your last occasion with Aston Villa? No, didn't know. I think, obviously, we had quite a few lads who were, were out of contract, but we're getting into the playoffs and then to the final. I think it was nobody really wanted to talk about it. Um, there was only one disappointment for me. was I went away on the Tuesday with the family. Um, when I landed back in here on Tuesday, I had two missed calls, one from a journalist saying I'd been released and one from the manager to, to give him a call. So that point of view was disappointing, but something I expected, to be honest. Yeah, you, you would have thought it'd be done face-to-face -face as well. Uh, well, I knew it couldn't be because straight after um, after the game, the Monday, like I said, it's like three, four days before meeting up here, so I wanted to spend some time with the, the wife and kids and get away there. So um, obviously it was... To be able to speak face to face was was I wasn't able to because I still had had games here to come back to. You spoke to him eventually on the phone though, did you? Caught him then, yeah. You know, just congratulated each other, wished each other all the best, and that was it. There was no hard feelings, like I said. I'm being in the game too long to uh, <laughs> hold grudges. So, no, listen, I want to wish Aston Villa all the best. Thank them for my time there. Thank the fans, everyone that was in involved. Um, no, we with some good times. So what happens to you now? Do you, you obviously you, you you want to continue play on? Definitely. Just had Real Madrid on the phone there before <laughs> I came in. Um, now listen, I want to I want to play as long as I can and and as high as I can. I want to try and make an impact wherever I go. Um, I've said already today in, in interviews I don't want to go anywhere and be a cheerleader. I want to go and and, and have a chance of playing. Um, I'm willing to fight for a spot, but as long as there's a fair fight, then. Now um, I'll, I'll go and do that. I presume this is the first time in your career you've been sort of effectively a free agent waiting for the, the phone to ring. What, what's that like? Yeah, first time um, being unemployed in 20 years or so. So now, listen, the phone hasn't stopped. It's This is what I didn't want. It's, we've got two big games for, for Ireland. Um, it's OK for Aston Villa and them celebrating, but my season hasn't finished yet, so... I'm concentrating on Denmark first and, and then hopefully Gibraltar after a good result. So once we get Gibraltar out of the way, I'm sure we'll sit down and I'll sit down with representatives and get some sort of plan together to, to see what we're going to do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Callum, just a similar situation, well, not a sort of similar situation with you. Your contract at, at Bristol City and not signing a new one. What, what can you tell us? What's the latest? Um, I'd say the latest on that, really. Um, do you know what? Similar to to Glenn, I haven't really been thinking about it to be honest. Um, my season hasn't finished. I know I had my hiccup injury where it, it knocked me out my stride a little bit uh, with my fitness. Um, so to be fair, my my main focus has been on these two games, and I kind of want to put that to bed uh, for the moment. Um, and obviously, there is interest. There's there's always interest season after season, just because mine. My contract's running out uh, next season. There's going to be uh, conspiracy theories and, and stuff about it. So at the moment, I'm, I'm a Bristol City player um, and the main focus is on the game Friday and Monday. Sure. So where are you physically then? You said you, you got that injury at the end that knocked you. Are you sort of back to where you want to be? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm back now. Um, I think it was my last game has been a few months. So fitness-wise, match fitness... Probably I'm lacking compared to uh, a few of the other boys in honesty, um, but I feel the last few weeks have helped me. I've I've managed to uh, keep fit, and for the remainder two games of the season I was fit, um, so I was fit to play. Um, so I think since then it's just been maintaining fitness, and the Portugal trip did help. Obviously. Ireland has seen a lot of Denmark in recent times. What, what's the, the, maybe the change in attitude going into this game? Is it a, is it a different one? Um, I think you could say so. I don't think the attitude changes. We're, we're trying to win a game. Um, first and foremost, I know we have a, a new manager um, since the last time we played. Um, so, yeah, you could say that could be 
uh, an advantage. Um, but obviously, we do think of previous results. And um, listen, we're just we're just going to go into that game and try and win it. Thank you. Hi, lads. Glenn, just uh, on your future, do you have an offer on the table at the moment? Um, no. I've, like I said to you, I'm worried about these two games that's coming up. Um, the speculation of going here and going there, but of nothing on the table as such. So, um, like I said, get Friday, Monday out of the way, and then I'll sit down and, and see, where, see where I'm at. I think it'll be sourced in the next couple of weeks then? Kind of, kind of I'd like to think so. I think... Um, no, the, the two years that I've, I've been at Aston Villa, I think I've played close to 70 games or so. So, um, no, I would like to think that I can go and make an impact and, and bring some positive positivity to somebody. So, if there's anyone out there, is this, is this like an audition, is it? <laughs> Put it out there. If anyone else there, there I'm available. No, I'll see, see what happens after these two games. Yeah, just on the, the game against Denmark... Again, you know, you could say apart from the second half of that World Cup qualif- World Cup playoff against the the games between the sides have been there's not been much in it. So, is there a sense that we're we talked up Denmark a little bit too much, perhaps here? Oh, listen, you have to give uh, Denmark credit on the night for the last game, the the five one, um, the players that they have, the the teams that they play for. You now you need to be wary of, but we've got a different manager now. Um, Hopefully a different style. Um, so yeah, listen, we we want to make an impact and and improve on what we've done against Georgia. Now we've got a little bit of confidence with two wins. Use that as much as as we can to to go into Friday and now really go and give them a game. Mm. You said they're hopefully a different style. Well, what do you mean by that? Do you mean a more progressive game plan? Uh, I think the way the way Mick wants his teams to play is he wants to be aggressive in the face. He doesn't doesn't want to sit back and and let the opposition play the nice stuff he wants us to get in after them. Um, you've seen that against Georgia. Georgia are a very good football inside, and now we went out and matched them, if not better. So, um, yeah, we need to be wary of Denmark's top players, but don't forget about what, what we're good at and, and stuff like that. Mm. And Callum, what's the aim for you now in the next couple of weeks is to try and get back into into this side? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I think the main... The main thing is just getting results. We've got, like Glenn said, um, we've got momentum, and I think that does help in, when you're in, when you're coming into a winning team. The spirits are high, um, so it's just helping the team out as much much as I can, really, to to get two positive results. Mm. What do you make of Denmark? Is is the talk of them being a great side justified? Do you think, or are they are they actually beatable going on the last two games we played? Each yeah, other? let's not play it down. They're a good side, but we're also a good side, um, and they have got good individual players but I think we have as well um, so it's just assessing what um, obviously what we're playing against and uh, just go out and win the game Cheers us Glenn um, just uh, first of all Mick has talked about a new style of football and a lot of, a lot of it is attack minded well he also talks about the importance of having someone there to sit in and look after number 10 and no matter who they're playing obviously number 10 this week is a uh, Ericsson. So, from your point of view, is that a role that you you know you see yourself as a as probably a, one of the main reasons why you, you you come back to the squad to, to play in, in games like this against players like that? Yeah, obviously. When I, when I spoke to the manager and for his reasons to bring me back is is maybe um, in games like this where the the number ten or the attacking player now you need to be a little bit more wary of and the position that I've been playing. Uh, Defensive midfielder, I'd like to think that I can make an impact. So, um, now listen, whatever whatever team goes goes out on Friday, we'll be more than capable. Not just of Ericsson, but the, the other attacking options. Um, like I said, it's they've got a lot of players who play for a lot of big teams, so we need to be wary of them. But on the other hand, hopefully, like what we've done in the, in the last two games, worry about ourselves a little bit more and, and what we we're good at and what we can do. So that's what we'll try and do. Just looking back, um, I thought one of your one of your best games in recent years was the game against Sweden and at the Euros where you sat almost in front of Ibrahim, Ibrahimovic to uh, almost cancel him out for a large portion of that game. So, do you draw on on those big games, those big experiences coming into weeks with this? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, like we've been saying, we've got a little bit of confidence. So, if you can draw back on anything where you've you've done well or played played well against certain players, then then you tend to do that. So. 
if I'm thinking about Ibrahimovic or if it's Ericsson, um, no, I'll we'll, we'll be going into any game like I've done over the years, giving me all and trying to work as hard as I can. So um, well, it's it's going to be tough. They've got great players, good players. No, but let's try and worry about ourselves. Can you speak obviously about the job you did at Villa, um, mission complete. You said uh, you came back to help make an Ireland to qualify for the Euro 2020. Would this be mission complete, the, the sequel? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, when I when I spoke to the manager, it was a case of would I come back, and I, I said uh, I, I definitely would. But like I said before, not not to just be a cheerleader or push people on. I want to have a chance of playing. Um, so I've come in the last couple of days training, training hard to to try and make the the eleven on on Friday. So listen, looking looking too far ahead is not an option, especially not for me at my age. Um, it's each game as it comes. So for me. Get a good result against Denmark, good result against Gibraltar, and then see where that puts us for um, now for next season. And thank you. And just for Callum, um, there was a lot of debate, I suppose, with Mick yesterday asking him about you know which players would be more suited to this game in terms of the lads who have played right up to last week with the playoff finals or stuff, or other lads who would have had the month off and you know were possibly fresher. So. In a, in a high intensity match of what, what's coming up a, against Denmark, is it is it probably is it possibly a, a benefit for someone like you who has the full fitness and the benefit of of being quite fresh coming into this game? Yeah, I think you could say so in a way. Um, I think it depends really. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm a believer of that really because I think it it all depends on. You look at the Champions League final the other day. I think both teams looked flat. They haven't played in a few weeks, whereas. Obviously, Glenn and Aston Villa have only recently just played. They could just carry that on, but then, then again, they could be tired. So I'm, I'm not too sure, really. But from my personal point of view, I do feel fresh. Um, I haven't played for a while, but my fitness is, is high at the moment. Um, so that's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Glenn, you've, you've said that you, you want to play on as, as long as you can. Have you spoken to lads who've regretted retiring too early? Um, I don't. It's, to be fair, most of, most of the lads that I know or I'm, I'm generally quite close to, it's, they've retired through injury or they've said they, that body just let them know. Um, like I said before, I think I've missed one game this season for Aston Villa. Um, I hurt my shoulder. But other than that, I've been available for every game and I've trained all the time. So um, I've, I've played with some lads who've gone on to play 28, 29. I was with I was at Man City at the time and Stuart Pierce was there and I think he was still playing top level at 39, 40. So I think for some reason it's you get to a certain age and people just go, Bosh, that's you done. And it's not for me. Um listen, I won't hang around, I won't be like a bad smell. I'll know I'll know when I'm done, I'm done. But like I said, if I can make an impact and some sort of impact, if it's pushing Callum on, if it's pushing other people on, now I'm more than happy to stay around. But um, like I said, feel fit. I've been lucky with injuries. I was never quick enough to to get a hamstring, so I'm I'm okay in certain. That's that's sort of thing. So you played a long time here with with Robbie Keane, who who moved overseas to to finish his his, his career. Is that something that you would be open to? I had one or two calls um, about possibilities of the owner, but then when I spoke to the the manager about coming back here. Um, I'll let him know and basically what he said to me was he, he wants to try and keep his squad and his players playing at the, the highest level for as long as possible so if I did think about that no disrespect to the foreign the foreign teams but oh, he'd be looking to closer to home um, he knows how good the Premier League is but the Championship is for me just, just as hard the quality in it the, the tempo and, and stuff like so I think if we want to hang around and play for Ireland, then I have to try and stay as, as high as I can. So the foreign thing is probably put back on, on the backbone now at the minute. Thank you. And Callum, just, just one final one. You, we've spoken a lot about how often you've played uh, Denmark in, in the last 18 months. You take a lot of positives from the nil-nils, but are there any scars from that 5-1 or is it just all gone? No, obviously you do remember your last games, but you don't, you don't want to dwell on it. Obviously it's a new... New campaign, new manager. We got. Um, you could probably say personnel has changed a little bit as well. So you don't, you don't try and, you don't want to get caught up in the last few games. 
I think it's like at club level you play, you know your teams inside out a bit as well now. The amount you play them and you sometimes get them in the cup, so it's kind of a new slate in a way, um, and not get. You don't want to be thinking about previous results, thinking you want revenge because it's not. It's not about that. You don't want to be caught up in that. So it's just going into the game and trying to win it. Thank you, Glenn. You alluded to your, I suppose, the physical side of the, of, of your condition. Um, as you've got older, have you had to do anything differently in regards to diet and? Your exercise, like it must take a lot of discipline just to keep in such good shape. Yeah, no, to be honest, if if anything, I'm trying to do a little bit more, um, just to stay on top of things. But regarding diet, it's it's for me, it's the same. Um, I feel good in training, feel good in, in matches. But um, now there's, there's certain aspects behind the scenes. You're probably staying in the ice bath that little bit longer. Or you're trying to get the massage. But like I said, it's. I've been lucky with injuries and I don't carry anything. So um, I would train as hard as I can every day and that's got me so far. As a Dubliner, what would it mean to you to play a major finals in your home city? Oh, it would be unbelievable um, to do that at the Aviva all the time. Uh, like I said, it's one of the reasons why I came back. It's Playing for Ireland is a dream, has always been my dream. So as a kid, every kid out there to play for your country, especially, especially at home, is, is unbelievable. But... I don't want to be getting too, hard, too ahead of myself um, for, for 2020. Um, like I said, worry about Friday and mon Monday and see where that gets us really. But we've got off to a, an OK start and let's keep it going. One of the things that some of the former players that played under Mick, like the likes of Kevin Kilban and Gary Breen, would say that the minute he comes in and uh, starts a job with the club or with the, a national team is that he just changes the morale or the mood in the camp. Like He gets everybody in good spirits, that kind of thing, and that, that has a knock-on effect with regards to your performances. Is that something you've noticed over the last couple of months? Yeah, definitely. He's, he's come in with a different type of enthusiasm for, for the job and, and for the players. Um, now he, get, he gives you a good lift. He's, he's not worried about the stuff that you can't do or things you're not good at. It's about what you're good at. Um, obviously, the young lads coming through, he's, he's pushed them, he's, he's spoken highly of them. and Like I said, results breeds, breeds confidence and to get the two results like we've done um, now is, is, is a step, stepping stone, but it's only a small one. Um, dead Mark Friday, if we can go into that and not just get a result, play well and get everyone back inside a little bit, fans, and get everyone cheering about what, what we can do and other than what we can't do or what we're not good at, now we'll give everyone um, a real boost. You didn't get any calls off any cricket teams after that tennis ball catch and throw in the... <laughs> against Georgia. No, I'm, I'm not a fan of cricket, but <laughs> anyone at baseball, maybe. Um, no, it was, it was weird when I was mad. I didn't even realise until afterwards people were saying, it's a great catch, and I was like, what are you on about? It was like, the ball that came in. So, yeah, obviously people, I think it actually happened just before Connor took the, the free kick, and but then for Connor to go on again, so... Um, now on Monday night, bring your, uh, your tennis balls and hopefully you score a few more goals. I said, just a quick one for Callum there. You, you seem to have added goals to your game this season a lot more than previous seasons. Is there any? Do you know what? I think it could be uh, using what I've got more, if I'm being honest. I think if you were to just look at me uh, and you've not watched me play before, I think you'd probably say a very direct, quick player. I think it's just using my strengths and my advantage. Um, working with Lee Johnson and different coaches to do more runs in behind and just because of that, I've scored a few more goals. Um, so I think I'd probably put it down to that, really. Last couple of notes. Hey, just, Glenn, when you were mentioning trying to get the fans back on side of the way, is that something that's talked about among the camp? Is there is a need to reconnect with the, the public? No, I, was, I had 12 months out of the team, and, and then I was a fan, and obviously when results don't go a certain way, you can obviously there's a backlash. Um, and then you only have to look at the attendances over the last few games at the Aviva. But <coughs> now it's understandable, it's it's not cheap to come and watch the team play. Um, but we're wary, or I'm certainly wary of, of, of giving something to cheer about when we are there. Maybe shot on target, or even if it's a tackle, anything to get the boost <coughs> going. And now hopefully, like I said, we've we've brought that back a little bit from a performance and a result against Georgia. But we're only one game away from, from things sliding. So. Listen, it's a little bit of confidence, a little boost that we have, and 
Well, you used that to wear the advantage, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a quick one for Callum. Um, obviously, you went involved in the last camp with Mick. Um, from the last couple of weeks, how have you found working with him? And do you feel like you've brought anything maybe new to your game in the, in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I'd probably say, um, first and foremost, I, I met him uh, on the last trip for the awards. You know, I think it was important for me to uh, <coughs> come over when I was injured uh, to meet the staff. Um, but kind of the style of play um, that he's using, it, I think it does does help me in a way, uh, the attacking way. And, um, I think he's had a real good influence on me. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, um, it's been good work for him so far. I'm looking forward to obviously uh, with the upcoming trips as well. Um, so yes, yeah, that's, that's kind of it really. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit late. It was just another interview. Then uh, good to see you back and. Um, yeah, never retire, never retire. But last November, it must have been a bit strange, because you were wheeled in by Martin, and he was kind of retiring you. And we were watching it, and we got the sense that you weren't quite going along with it, but you kind of had to, because it was he was the call. A little bit surreal, that, and comparing that to now, and your own sort of, where you were then, and where you were now, in your own head with Gareth Ireland. Yeah, well, listen, I appreciate everything Martin done for me, because at the time, he, he phoned me and asked me to come in as a, like, a, a farewell. So. To have that chance, it was well, more than grateful for. Um, Martin's vision was bringing in younger lads or, or different lads and, and going a certain way, so I was more than respectful for that. I was, like I said, more than happy to come in and play. Um, but it wasn't a case of me coming out and rubber stamping and saying, that's me, finished, I'm done. I was, I'd never do that. But I'd be in a wheelchair and I'd be wheeled out if I had to. Um, but to get the call from, from Mick then, Mick that asked the question, was I retired and said, well, I've never retired. I was put into retirement. And then he asked, would you be available if needed or anything happened? And I was like, yeah, as long as I have a chance of playing. I've said before already, as long as, as, long as it's a fair fight for the, for the jersey, um, I'm willing to come back and fight. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks.